I was lucky enough to referee Martin Johnson um, just at the end of his career, the start of mine, I was petrified, you know, to the point where I simbined him once and I apologise as I did it. <laughs> so I'm from Gloucestershire, um, a small part of Gloucestershire called the Forest of Dean. If anyone knows the Forest of Dean, I know it's a bit of a rugby hotbed of not just Gloucestershire, but of England as well. If you drew a line where you thought probably England and Wales started, you'd probably put the Forest of Dean within the Welsh side. And we've got a lot of similar traits to the Welsh. You know, we've got um, coal mining, we've got um, marching brass bands, and we've got rugby. Um, and rugby is something that's been in my family and in my life since a, a very young age. I went off to university and there I'd play um, a bit of midweek rugby for you know that mighty uh, well-known university town of uh, Norfolk um, up in Norwich at the University of East Anglia um, and then I'd referee on a Saturday and again you know I'd earn a couple of pounds travelling expenses and I'd get a couple of free pints and you can see you know as a student again that was pretty attractive I and mean, then that's that's how it all started and um, I realised pretty quickly which I was better at my teammates um, told me quite often which I was better at and uh, and then I, I took the route down to be becoming a professional referee um, in 2005. Everyone knows it was a bit of a surprise that I went to 2007 as one of only 12 referees. One sec, one sec, okay, okay, relax. Um, I'd only refereed perhaps four or five test matches by the time that selection was made. But, um, you know, you, you learn from those experiences. You learned a lot from 07. I just talked to the captain. Seven! Okay, we've just got a late hit by number eight of them and number nine, no need. High tackle here, just disciplined, been very good till now. So just have a word if you would. Okay. You know, from the three tournaments I've been in, I think we'll all remember South Africa versus Japan from the last World Cup. In 07, I think the hack home of the French um, in the quarterfinals when they're meant to stand on the 10 metre line, but all of a sudden they're nose to nose laughing at each other. The moments like that will always, you know, make, make the back of, uh, back of your neck kind of the hair stand up. And in 03, you know, you do watch it with slightly, you know, English eyes. Um, you know, you know the moment when we, we thought we were going to lose against the, the Welsh. Charles, yes! Second try to Wales, they've hit double figures. Yeah, you know, Mike Cap came on and kind of changed the game a little bit. Oh, he's guessed them. What a burst by Robertson. He has Greenwood outside. Where's Wilkinson? Field goal. That'd really rub it in, wouldn't it? He hit it well. Yes. There was the, the, he turned on the game for the semi-final against the, uh, the French and all of a sudden it started raining and you could just see the England forwards kind of rubbing their hands together thinking this is, is going to be um, special. Just over eight minutes remaining. Wilkinson, all 24. Wilkinson 24, France 7. A huge fans of players, you know, people who have that ability um, to be, you know, single-mindedness, you know, the Martin Johnsons, you know, that, you know, I, I'm going to commit my, you know, my life um, to this task over the next four years and, you know, drive and drag people with him, you know, the, you know, the extra time talk um, during the World Cup where he rallied and pulled everyone together, everyone looked up to him as a leader. I was lucky enough to referee Martin Johnson. Um, just at the end of his career, the start of mine, I was petrified. You know, to the point where I simbined him once and I apologised as I did it. <laughs> um, because um, he was an icon in the game, you know, and as a 23, 24-year-old, um, you know, you look up to someone who just won the World Cup, you know, captain two lions by that point. And so when you have to simbin him for tackling someone after a metre and a quick tap penalty, you feel slightly fraudulent that you're there doing it. So I issued a yellow card and um, 
and I said, I'm really sorry, sir. <laughs> to which I think he replied something like, um, that's probably the only one you got right all day. So I, I think, you know, the, the 03 as, a, as an Englishman will always sit, sit in our minds, but you just look at the captains who lifted that cup. 07, the John Schmidt. The Webberless Trophy goes to South Africa for the second time. 11, Richie McCall, Richie McCall again. They are iconic um, players, and you know, we've got those iconic players uh, around now, you know, who've got the, the 100 caps, the Alan Wynne Jones, you know, Johnny Sexton's who's getting close to 100, you know, Pocock, Hooper, all, all of these fantastic players who, who, who are going to be at this World Cup, and you know, just really, that's why I'm really excited about this one. Japan, I've, I've refereed on two previous occasions, um, and they are so welcoming, um, and it's such a colourful country, um, and I think they're going to be so proud to host it. I just think all the fans who've never been to Japan in particular are in for a real treat. It's a rugby miracle. Of course, we're, we're, you know, we're scrutinised, we're under pressure. It is a big night for the official in charge, Mr Wayne Barnes, who I suppose has plenty of experience at this stage. A lot of talk about him during the week, Donald. Yeah, it certainly is. For whatever reason, Ireland have gone on the wrong side of him. They've lost six of the ten Six Nations matches that he has refereed, but they've just got to work with him tonight. We've heard it said many a time, with pressure, pressure, there's a lot of privilege. You know, and there's a huge amount of privilege standing in the middle between, you know, a, a Bledisloe Cup match or a, uh, a Wales versus Ireland match or an Ireland versus New Zealand match in November. Still going. Best puts him down, Omani and over the top, got to protect his body weight, Omani has a clutch on that ball, he has a grip on that ball, and Peter Omani wins the penalty. Just got in, painted a good picture for the referee. You know, those, those are the games that we want to be involved in as match officials, you know, the same as the players want to be involved in those occasions, so if you want to be involved in them, you've got to accept it. That with that comes You um, can't say, but I can. Corkon's finest, absolutely brilliant from Peter Armani. There for Sexton, in behind to Aki. They switch the point of attack to the left-hand side. Stockdale, that chip works out. That chip works really well. Stockdale for Ireland. Jacob Stockdale! Yes. What a try! One mistake and it's all over. There for New Zealand. 16th phase coming up. That's dropped! That's, it. That's dropped! It's over! The final whistle sounds! Chicago is banished to the memory and Ireland have beat New Zealand in Dublin for the first time ever! My whole aim for the World Cup is not to be mentioned. No mentions of Wayne Barnes during 2019. Well, actually, no me mentions match officials during the 2019 World Cup. We've done our job. If we work in a respectful manner, we can make this game better. I think that's what, as fans and as lovers of the game, we, we've all got to remember. So not just me as a ref, not just as a player, as a, or as a coach. It's everyone who wants to be involved in the game, wants to grow our game, has to show that respect. Respect for the opposition, respect for the team on the pitch, and respect for officials. We've all got a role to play to make sure that this game keeps growing and stays, in my view, the greatest game in the world.